Dragnet. Ladies and gentlemen, this true story concerns the heart of a great city. It took 58 minutes to resolve the question of its safety or its total destruction. This is the story of those 58 minutes. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, November 15th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were off duty reporting in on an emergency call. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Lynn White, Deputy Chief of Police. My name's Friday. It was 8.25 a.m. when I walked into the Main Street entrance of the City Hall. Sergeant Friday? Yeah, that's right. Just to take this elevator start and tell everyone to serve. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to run you up to 16. Chief's waiting for you up there. Well, what's the pitch? Only one elevator here in service out of ten? The place looks deserted. What's going on? Well, nobody in the building, Sergeant. All the office people have been sent home. Lots of trouble. Somebody declare a holiday? No joke, Sergeant. Big trouble. Well, you convinced me. What is it? Here we are. 16th floor. Okay. Over here, Friday. Right. Hi, Jim. Hello, Ben. You made good time. I came as soon as I got the call in. Sorry to have to bring you back in. You worked last night, didn't you? Yeah, midnight to eight this morning. Sorry. Right. Come on. Well, what is it, Skipper? Why all the hush hush? Where do we get inside? In here. Okay. Number one, let's keep our voices down. All right. I'll make it as brief as I can. Every night counts. What time you got, Friday? Uh, 8.33. All right, here it is. Fifty-five minutes ago, a man walked into this building with a homemade bomb under his arm. If we don't release his brother from the county jail by 9 o'clock this morning, he says he'll pull the trigger on the bomb and blow up the whole building. He's kidding, Skipper. Well, who is the guy? His name's Vernon Carney. Here's his package. He and his brother have been in and out of jail since 1937. Small-time thieves. Mm, FBI kickback here. We had him once before, both of them. Brother's name is Elwood. Serving a year for car stripping. And this two-bit thief is sitting here in the city hall with a bomb on his lap? That's right, the next room. Well, what kind of a bomb is it, Len? You think he's bluffing? Could be bluffing. The crime lab says no. Lee Jones from the lab get a look at it? He's been in here twice. One of the boxes glass. Says he can't see much without a closer look, but you can't get near the guy. All right, what do you want us to do? It's a volunteer job. I can take it or leave it. I won't order you to do it. How do you want to handle it? You sure you want a piece of this, Romero? No, no, he doesn't. He's got a family. Can you get me another single man? We'll give it a try. Wait a minute, Joe. What makes this job so different? Every time we kick in a door, we never know what's on the other side. That's what makes it different. This time we do. No, you're not going to cut me out. Not the only time I know what I'm getting into. All right. Chandler's tried. Hannon, Davis, Watson, they've all tried. This guy, Carney, knows what he's doing. He's no pushover, but somebody's got to get that bomb away from him. Joe, baby, now. I looked at my watch. It was 8.36. We left Chief White and started down the hall. If Carney was going to make good his threat to blow up the building by 9 o'clock, we had exactly 24 minutes to talk him out of it. Ben and I figured we'd better look him over first and then work out some kind of a plan. Maybe just talking to him would do it. Vernon Carney was sitting in a straight back chair against the far wall facing the door. He was seated between two windows that looked out over the city. In the center of the right wall was a connecting door leading to the office where Chief White had briefed us. The door was locked on both sides. Just off the center and favoring the left of the room was a small filing table. There was a dictaphone on it. In the near left corner, shielded by a white screen, was a small wash basin. Vernon Carney sat erect, holding a black box on his lap. He held his right hand inside one end of the box. Ben and I walked into the room. What do you say to a man with a bomb? That's close enough. Cigarette, Carney? I'm not smoking right now. What are you trying to prove? You know what I want. We're not going to let your brother out of jail. You've got until 9 o'clock to change your mind. According to that clock up there in the wall, you've got 24 minutes. If we go, you're going with us, Carney. 
Don't take much of a brain to figure that one out, Copper. What made you think you could get away with this? I haven't yet. It ain't nine o'clock. Unless that clock's slow. I haven't checked it against my pocket watch lately, and that's the one that's running this show. Have you given any thought to all the innocent people that are going to go up with that thing of yours? My brother's innocent. I want him out of jail. The court says he's guilty. He'll get out when he serves his time. That's where you're wrong, Copper. He gets out at nine o'clock this morning. All right, come on, Connie. Get your hand out of that box. Put the box on the table. You think I'm bluffing, don't you? I'm going to let you get within five feet of me before I make a liar out of you. All right, Connie. I guess you mean business. You can take three more steps and find out for sure. Suppose we did let your brother out. We'd just come out and pick him up again, you along with him. If you could find us. Let's get this straight. If we let your brother Elwood out, how do we know you'll keep your promise? What promise? I haven't made any promises. You just get Elwood down here first, then we'll talk about it. Look, there's just one thing I can't figure, Carney. Yeah, what's that? If we don't let your brother out, you say you'll pull the trigger on that bomb. What are you going to prove by that? 837 now. you got 23 minutes left. No, I wish you'd answer that one for me. Why do you want to kill a lot of innocent people? Don't try to con me, copper. I know they cleared everybody out of this building 45 minutes ago. I know they cleaned out the whole block. They got it roped off. Where'd you get your information? I got a couple of windows here to look out of. Don't you think it's about time you sent somebody over to get Elwood? What's to stop us from leaving the building along with the other few officers and let you sit here and touch off that bomb? Go ahead. Won't be a long wait without you. Who are you trying to kid? You'd let me blow up $10 million with the taxpayers' money? No, you're going to let Elwood out. You wait till the last minute to do it. But you let him out. All right, let's go. Lynn, listen. Yeah? I'm still not convinced that Carney can back up what he says. Well, why don't you take the box away from him? Yeah. Well, we're in a spot, let's face it. How about us getting him first? How are you going to handle it? I'm not top man on the pistol range, but I could wing him. Then he hands the box to you? Or maybe it falls and his reflex action pulls the trigger. Okay, I don't wing him. I stop him for key. You just can't walk in there and shoot him down. Why not? You do the same thing with any arm criminal. Yeah, but you warn him first. I'll warn him. And after you shoot him, you find out it's a harmless gadget. Couldn't have gone off in a million years. No, a gun's not the answer. We can't shoot him until we're positive. We'll be positive by 9 o'clock, but then there might not be anybody around to shoot him. We've located Connie's apartment. There's a detail out there checking it now. But Charlie and Morris. Have you got any ideas at all? Anything we could try? Well, that's why I called you in. None of us have gotten any further than you did just now. But there's just one thing I want to know for sure. Yeah, Friday. Is it or isn't it? We all want to know. Either way, we've got to get that box away from you. I get it. White speaking. Yeah. Did? Now stay out there. I'll call you. That was for Shelley. They just found 28 sticks of dynamite in Carney's apartment. We knew now Carney wasn't kidding. We could see into the bomb through the glass window in one end. There was dynamite inside, and there was dynamite in Carney's room. We didn't know if he had the nerve to pull the trigger. We didn't know if it would go off when he did, but with only minutes remaining, nobody wanted to take the chance. From here on in, all of us agreed that Vernon Carney sat in the next room, holding in his two hands a force powerful enough to destroy us all. I looked at my watch. It was 20 minutes till 9. How do we get it away from him? I got an idea. It might work. What's that? Well, Carney's sitting against the far wall between two windows, and they're both open. That's right. If we could get a man through one of those windows, we might get Carney from behind. How are you going to get him? Well, whoever gets through the window could slug him. What do you do then? Somebody grabs the box. The crime lab can tell us what to do with it then. How do we get a man through one of those windows? We're on the 16th floor. Well, there's some kind of a ledge that runs around the building on each story, isn't there? Wide enough for a man to walk on? Let's take a look. Uh-huh. Looks pretty narrow, Joe. Mm-hmm. Good 18 inches. Could be done. Too risky. It's been raining out that late and slippery. Strong wind out there, Joe. Tear a man right off the building. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, there's still a way. How about a ladder? 16 floor, Skipper. Well, there might be a way. The fire department would know that. I'll get Battalion Chief Erickson. Is Lee Jones in the building? No, he's over at the crime lab. I'll get him up here, too. I don't know, Friday. Maybe it'll work. It's got to, Lynn. All right, now look. It's going to take a couple of minutes to set this up. We've got to know what Connie's doing every second of that time. How about the dictaphone on the table in there? Good. 
Get it on without him seeing you. We'll try. A dictaphone in there is connected to this one in here. This room is 1614. You got that? Yeah. All right. Push down key 1614 on that machine in there and leave it down. Get the receiver off the hook and leave it off. Leave the receiver off. That's right. You know, if it isn't off the hook, we won't be able to hear a thing in here. Right. Come on, Ben. Lynn White speaking. Hey, Chief Erickson. Where's my brother? Still in his cell. You coppers are long on talk, short on time. Yeah, we know. I'm telling you, for your own good, you better get Elwood over here. Connie, I'll bet if we get your brother on the phone here, he'll tell you that he doesn't want any part of this. You mean Elwood doesn't want to get out since when? Sure he wants out, but not your way. He's only got a year to serve. Why don't you leave him alone? I told Al, I told him I'd get him out. He didn't think I could do it, but I'm doing it. I'll make you a bet, Carney. You let us get your brother on the phone. He won't walk out of here with you. Get him on the phone. All right. Where are you going? Phone's over here. Have to use the dictaphone. I got to get an okay from the chief. Elwood's still a prisoner. What's the matter with the phone? No operators. You know the building's been cleared. That's right. I almost forgot. Okay, you can use the dictaphone. It's Friday, Chief. Connie wants to talk to his brother. I know you'll have to send somebody over. Have him put the call on the extension. Wait a minute. Put that extension number there. 2351. 2351, Lynn. Right? It'll take a minute. All right. I kind of like to talk to Al. Been a couple of months since I've seen him. We've always been together, me and Al, most of the time. Joe, let's go in and see if we can't hurry that call. Good idea, boy. It's 16 minutes to nine. Yeah. Hey, cop. Yeah. You got to hang up the dictaphone, didn't you? I put the receiver back on the dictaphone. Ben and I had failed to make good on the first step of the plan. When we got outside the door, we briefed Davis and Watson. I went in to sit with Carney. It would be their job to keep us posted on Carney's movements. The dictaphone was out. We went back into the office next door. Chief Sam Erickson of the fire department and Lieutenant Lee Jones from the crime lab were already there. Would have been a help. We haven't got time to cry over it. Connie's wide awake, Skipper. He doesn't miss a thing. White told us a plan, Friday. We can't run a ladder up from the street. Too high, huh, Chief? The best we've got is a 100-foot aerial. You figure 12 foot to the story, that'll take you up 96 feet, eight floors. Mm -hmm. We got the latest equipment. What's that idea you had, Jones? Sam, can you get a hold of a pump here in a hurry? Sure, we got a lot of scaling ladders, but you got nothing up there to hook them on. You figure on dropping down from the floor above? That's right, and I figure Pompeo would do it. Sure, it would. You could uh, make it past the window sill up there, but you got a foot and a half ledge in the way. Now, what you want's a lifeline. You mean lower a man on a rope, Chief? Yeah, Romero, that's the uh, quickest and the quietest. Could you rig it so one of my boys could do it? Sure, Len. What's the risk? None, if you work it right. We'll strap on a life belt, give the man heavy leather gloves. Two of my men will lower him down. Pick your lightest man. What do you think, Lee? That's it. What do we do with the bomb when we get it? I figure that box Connie's holding is about a foot square. Here's what I'll do. I'll get you a bucket with a foot and a half mouth and it'll be full of water. Yeah. I'll have it right outside the door to that office. When you get that box, place it in the water. We'll get the bucket out of the building as fast as we can. Once we get the bomb underwater, we're in a clear. I can't promise you that, but it's the safest way to handle it under the circumstances. All right, that's it. Sam, you take care of your end? Right away. I'll get a detail to give me a hand down the street and we'll take the bomb to a safe area and decommission it. Let's move on it. All right, then. Which part do you want, the rope or the bomb? You call it. Fire Chief Erickson said the lightest man on the rope. That's me, Joe. All right, I'll get the bomb out of the building. Okay, that's the routine. we we'll carry this with you. The man that comes down that rope has one chance to make good. Slug him and make it count. There's no second try. Yeah. And Joe, when you grab that box, you've got to get it away from Carney before he can squeeze the trigger. Then you've got to get it down the street. The elevator. You know how to operate it? Well, it's pretty simple, but I'll double-check with the operator. You better do it right now. Okay. Say we better get Carney's brother on the phone for him. He seemed anxious. That might be a pretty good idea. All right, Romero, that's the outside phone. Get the city jail. All right, Skipper. Get going, Friday. All right. Hey, you, elevator man. Yeah, Jordan? I want to see if I know how to work this thing of yours. Uh, you taking over the elevator? In a couple of minutes. You want to check me out? Nothing to it, Sergeant. Um, here's the control. You push this lever right to go up, left to go down. You see this little trigger on the underside of the handle? Yeah. Uh, that's a safety lock. Be sure you squeeze it. You can't move the lever. That's all right if I try it. Okay. Where do I turn off the master switch? All right. That's it. Right to go up, left to go down. All right, now, how do you operate the doors? Automatic. They work off the control lever. When the control lever is locked in the up or down position, the doors will close. I got it. Now, in case they jam, this red emergency button up here? Uh, yeah. Now, push it. 
If that doesn't close, then we call the repairman. Okay, I think I got it. You want to turn that switch back on? All right. You sure now? I have my orders to get out of the building. I'll just leave the elevator right here and take the stairs down. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Sergeant? Hmm. Just curious. You going to take the bomb down this car? We're going to try. You won't have any trouble. We haven't had an elevator failure in 18 months. The elevator man turned and went down the stairs. I started down the corridor and met Ben outside the office. He told me that Lee Jones and Chief Erickson were on their way up in the freight elevator at the rear of the building with the necessary equipment. The two fire department volunteers were with them. The phone call had been put through the city jail, and in a minute, Elwood Carney would be ready at the other end of the line. We went in to tell Carney. I told him over at the jail to put the call through on extension 2351. When's it coming through? Right now. You got Elwood with you? No. We told you we'd get him on the phone for you. Call will be through in a minute. A minute's a long time, cop. You've only got 12 of them left. Elwood's going to talk you out of this. Oh, sure, sure. Everybody's going to talk me out of this. First, it was them other two cops, the little porky guy and the little monkey. Then you and this Dixie doughhead here. Now it's Elwood. Now, come off it, will you? Get my brother over here. That's him now. It's your brother, Connie, I'll get him. They put you. Just going to get the phone. You want to talk to your brother, don't you? I'll take care of the phone. We'll just disconnect it for a little. Now, get this straight, copper. I'm through with this stinking, rotten lion. I want another one here, and I want him now. I'll bring him here before I blow you all to pieces. Who threw that phone out in the hall? I did. You want me to go out there and pick it up? Connie, that's not going to get you any place. Are you the big boss around here? Maybe. Are you around right? I answered you. All right, big boy, I got a piece of advice for you. You take your rookie cops here and get it through their thick heads. I mean what I say. I want my brother over here in this room. And you've got just 11 minutes to get it done. Now you tell him that, will you? All right, Connie. It's your show. All right, we've got to work fast now. Jones, everything's set for you. Got the bucket with the water right here. Car's waiting down the street. Right. Erickson, your boys ready? Upstairs, waiting. We don't know what to do. I'll need somebody to give me a hand with Carney when he falls. I'll be in there with you, Friday. Ready to go upstairs, Chief? Anytime. One thing you ought to know. What's that? Wind's getting stronger, about 20 mile an hour out there right now. That's going to allow us to sun? No, but it's going to increase the sway. You've got to allow for it. How do you mean? Wind's coming from the south. We'll lower you just to the right of the wind. If I figure right, the wind will do the rest. Bigger risk, but we don't control the weather. How are you going to do it, Ben? As soon as I get in position, I'll reach in through the window on his right and I'll use the building. Try to catch him on the right side of the head. One good hit should put him away. Make it two and be sure, huh? Right, you ready, Chief? Let's go. What's the time, Friday? 8.50. Shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes for Romero to get down to that window unless the wind gives him trouble. Jones, there's no use you sticking around. I'll give Friday a hand. That's my job. we got to keep you alive to decommission a bomb. Bum joke. See you downstairs. You ready, Lynn? Yeah. Scared, Friday? Yeah. Makes us even. Come on. Lynn White and I went into the next room with Vernon Carney. Ben was going to make a try from the window on Carney's right. Somehow, he had to keep his attention on us and away from that window. If anything went wrong and Carney got out of position, the plan had failed. Chief Erickson didn't estimate the force of the wind correctly. The plan had failed. I looked at my watch. It was eight minutes to nine. Carney, anything we can say that'll make you change your mind? I've asked you a hundred times. Now I'm ordering. They're going to get to a phone and have somebody send Elwood over here right now. I'm, I'm through waiting. Now move. You ripped the phone out, Carney. Well, then find another one. I told you, I'm sick of your two-bit stolen. We've got until nine o'clock to make up our mind about this. You had until nine. You wouldn't do what I told you. Now I'm cutting you short. You guys got exactly one minute to get a phone in this room right near you, call a jail, and have him send Elwood over here. You said nine, Connie. All right, Joe. We'll give him what he wants. Davis, unlock the connecting door to this office. I get the phone, Lee. A cord reach? Come in. Yeah. Your brother's a prisoner. He's in our custody and he's under our protection. We can't place his life in jeopardy. Leave that up to hell. Come with This is Lynn White. We want Elwood Carney over here at City Hall. His brother wants to see him. Explain the situation. If he wants to come, get him over here. Leave it up to him. 
Room 1614. You'll have to use the freight elevator. And tell him to hurry. Yeah. Tell him to hurry. Now, that's the only smart thing you've done today. Now, why don't you go next door and figure out another angle? We'll wait for Elwood, too. You don't think I'd let you get out now, do you? We're all going to wait right here for my brother. In case he don't show up, you're going to see me pull the plug. Now, sit down. Not so close, right where you are. Sit down. Loud clock, ain't it? It's windy. It's getting cold in here. Maybe I had to close the window. Hey, turn on the heat. Stay put, cop. What's that? What's going on? Get the wind, cop. There's somebody out there. I can see his feet. You stupid cunt. Pull him up. Get, get back there. You pull him up. Heidi, right, tell him to pull him up. You bet I win, you dumb coppers. You didn't think I'd miss a trick like that. Now we'll just close the windows, boy. I won. And locked. Here's your brother, Connie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. I did it. I told you. I told you I'd do it, didn't I? That's far enough for the rest of you. Yeah, you come on over here. Crazy, Vern, you're crazy. That's what they've been trying to tell me. We're going home now. How are you going to do it? There's a million cops outside. People all over town heard about this. They're holding the crowd back. They ain't going to stop us now. Either. You'll never make it, either one of you. I got him this far, didn't I? We'll make it. Vern, you think we could do it? You. Yeah? They're going to get a car ready for us, a fast one. Have it in front of the building. Move! All right, Friday, do what he tells you. All right. Hold it. Yeah? If you ain't back by 9 o'clock, the deal still holds. I told them I'd pull the pin at nine, Alice. They didn't let you out. You ain't fooling, are you, Vern? That gadget really blow? Four miles high. They won't let you pull it. We're getting out. All right, copper, get the car. You got four minutes. Hey, Ben. Ben! What happened? He's bought me? Yeah, no time to explain. Now, listen, we got to work fast. Yeah? We had to bring Connie's brother over from the jail. How much time we got? Less than four minutes. How about the ledge? Think you can do it? Strong winds, you'll have to hang on like a fly. I don't know. I can give it a try. Okay, same plan. Every second counts. Now, I can't brief Lynn. He's in the room with the guy. It's up to you and me. I'll get on the ledge from one of these offices. I hope I'll make you. If you don't, we'll know you tried. Now, hurry. Hey, Ben, wait a minute. Uh, yeah? I forgot. The window's the one on his right. He locked it. You'll have to crawl around with the one on the left. You got it? Right. Okay. Carl, I'll be ready in two minutes out front. Why? Ellen and I will just sit here and wait. It's going to be good being back together, now. Well, we always were real good together, Vern. Well, that's the way brothers ought to be together all the time. Yeah, Vern, I'd feel better with a gun. We don't need no gun. We got the bomb. We need a gun when we get out. We get on the road. Okay, take your pick. They all got him. You, give him yours. I'm not carrying a gun. I left it in the other room. A cop without a gun? <laughs> Who's kidding who? I left it in the other room. Just the big boy, though. He's got one, huh? It's about time for that car, ain't it? It's two minutes to nine. Yeah, this feels like it right on his hip. Hey, you grab him, Joe. I got him. Get him up. See that guy alone. I got him, Ben. I gotta get his hand out of it. Run, Joe. Get in the water. Run! Fast elevator, 16 floors isn't very much, but I never shared an elevator with a live bomb. Seemed like hours between floors. I kept watching the bucket. The bomb was completely underwater. A small stream of bubbles was hissing to the surface. I waited. Main floor. I picked up the bucket and ran for the street. I missed the first step. I fell forward. The bucket spun out of my hand. I sprawled flat on the sidewalk. I waited for the explosion. Didn't go off, Friday. Yeah. I gave it a good chance, Lee. It was all there. Look, at least a dozen sticks of dynamite. Snyder, bring that over here. Here you are, Lieutenant. Thanks. Here's why it didn't go off. Yeah? Had it rigged for a hard trigger pull. 
Would have taken a good yank to set this one off. All right, Joe. All right, Ben. Clumsy. The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On February 15th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. <laughs> Vernon Carney was examined by five different psychiatrists appointed by the Superior Court and found to be mentally incompetent. He is now confined in the state mental institution for the criminally insane. Elwood Carney is now serving the balance of his sentence with no time off for good behavior. 